Hey everybody! I am using a um, new program, for, uh, Screencast-O-Matic, for this video, so hopefully you'll like the, um, the presentation a little bit better once I actually get it all figured out. There we go. Today's um, video is related to progressivism, and you're going to be completing this graphic organizer in your packet that says progressivism at the top. Okay. Our goal today is to learn who the progressives were in the early 1900s, what their goals were, who were some famous progressives, and what causes were they dedicated to, and who benefited from progressivism, and who saw it as a threat. Um, one major thing that you need to understand is that the root of progressivism is progress. And so basically, progressives call themselves that because in their minds they wanted to make progress in society and make society better reform society or make it again and make it better um, so that uh, conditions for everyone will be improved. Okay, They generally were small business people, professionals, middle class city people. Um, later they would include labor unions, but at first they were kind of middle class uh, educated white folk, generally made up the progressives. Um, they were also religious people, kind of do-gooders. They had been inspired by this social gospel idea, the idea that if you wanted to be a good Christian, you had to help the poor as Christ did in the Bible. They also tended to believe that the problems of society needed to be addressed by government, not by private enterprise, not by capitalism, but rather that, in fact, government needed to counterbalance the, the size and power of um, corporate America, and so they believed in a more active government. Now, I don't have any handy little props in my uh, video this time, but they're not really necessary because we have some examples of, of progressives today. In fact, there's a, um, a fight going on for the heart and soul of the Democratic Party right now, and the leading uh, challenger to Hillary Clinton is Bernie Sanders, and Bernie Sanders is a modern progressive. Okay, So the difference between modern progressives and progressives back in the past, though, is that modern progressives tend to be concerned about issues of race, and also, um, they tend to not be as religious. Progressives in the early 1900s were actually kind of blind about racism and kind of racist when it came to immigrants as well. They kind of thought that immigrants should shed their culture and very quickly assimilate into mainstream culture. Um, and progressives really didn't see racism as a major social problem and did not address it. In fact, one of our most progressive presidents was Woodrow Wilson, and he was also fairly racist. Uh, resegregating our um, government offices, for example. So keep in mind that progressivism is still alive today. Um, MSNBC is a channel on TV that probably best is the voice for progressive ideas, and Bernie Sanders is a politician that probably is the best representation of progressive ideas. Progressives in 1900 had uh, many different, sometimes contra contradictory goals. One is they wanted to improve uh, the sweatshops and make factory workers um, have better conditions. They called this white slavery. Um, also kind of tells you how they're tone deaf to issues related to race if they thought that low wage work was anything like slavery. But um, And also they wanted to stop prostitution. That was a part of their religious um, orientation. They wanted to stop the sale, transport, and consumption of alcohol. And they also wanted immigrants to very quickly uh, assimilate into mainstream culture and give up their home culture. They also, uh, a lot of progressives wanted to stop immigration. They felt that uh, the American culture was being inundated and overwhelmed by immigrants that were driving down wages. And they wanted to stop monopolies or big businesses from taking over whole industries. And so that's called antitrust legislation or laws against monopolies. And then they wanted to regulate the utility companies, uh, which had a monopoly over each consumer. So there's only one power line coming to your house. There's only one water line coming to your house. So by default, those companies have a monopoly over you and could drive up prices unless they are regulated or overseen or supervised by the government. In some cases, they wanted the government to just take over the water company or take over the power company. This is called gas and water socialism, and it's pretty widely practiced back then. They also wanted women, and today, actually, uh, they, they also wanted women to have the right to vote. That's what suffrage means, not to suffer, but to vote. And they wanted children to go to school and not to work in the um, sweatshops. They wanted to get rid of political machines and reform uh, local, state, and national government. 
And they also practiced something called Taylorism. Taylorism was the idea that we should make our workplaces as efficient as possible and um, watch where people work and how they work and figure out how to lay out the workspace in such a way that as little movement or um, repetition uh, takes place as possible. And in general, they just wanted political reform. They wanted more of the common people to be able to participate in the democracy and not to be manipulated so much by the wealthy um, in the democracy. There's four basic types of, types of progressives. There's economic progressives who want to crack down on monopolies. There's structural and political uh, progressives who want there to be greater efficiency in the way the democracy works. And also um, our workplaces and schools make them more efficient. Then there's a uh, social uh, progressives who just want there to be greater, um, uh, less distinct social classes and more people who are able to participate uh, equally in society on a basis of equality. And then there's moral progressives who basically wanted to impose their ideas of purity and morality on all of society. Uh, part of this movement comes out of what's called the cult of domesticity. If you remember, middle class women had been relegated to basically just stay home and not be in the public sphere and educate their children and clean their houses and make, make meals if in fact that they didn't have domestic servants. But what progressivism does is elevates these educated women and gets them out of their house and says they should in fact be helping society and doing work in the public realm. So this is kind of the beginning of the end of the cult of domesticity where women get out of the house. Um, Florence Kelly was a famous progressive. Uh, she was basically an advocate for improving the lives of women and children, and she worked to um, make sure that children had greater access to school and were less likely to work in factories and um, looked out for their welfare. Then, um, oh, here's some examples of uh, young kids working in a coal uh, sorting factory, as well as uh, young boys who were selling newspapers on the streets instead of going to school. These were the kinds of issues that would have concerned Florence Kelly. Uh, here's a young girl in a textile mill looking out the window um, rather than being in school, and a young boy who is a carpenter, and children working in the fields in agriculture. All of these would have concerned Florence Kelly. Uh, and here are boys who uh, shovel coal in the railroads. Progressives were mainly uh, women, and uh, they were also concerned about women workers. They were young, single, widows, divorcees, married, uh, poor women, and women of color who worked uh, in agriculture and factories. So. Uh, they were also concerned about the working conditions of women and being an advocate for women. One of the most famous progressives was a guy named Robert LaFollet. Uh, he was the governor of Wisconsin, and he was famous for being a progressive governor. And in fact, progressivism really started at the local and state governments and then works its way up to the national level um, over time. And Robert LaFollet was a famous spokesperson at the state level of Wisconsin for these reforms. Here's some examples of some cartoons. You can see that uh, here he's looking... Uh, at using this baseball bat to bust up trusts and make monopolies break into smaller businesses that will compete and drive down prices. And then here you can see him uh, pointing to a cartoon about how he quit letting the railroads strangle the common people by passing good laws. And he looks quite proud of his reforms. These would have been uh, typical actions of progressives in lots of different states. Uh, also, we talked about women's suffrage. One of the most famous advocates for women's suffrage was Susan B. Anthony. She actually was a teacher that realized she was being discriminated against because she was female. And so she decided to vote even though women were not allowed to vote. She committed an act of civil disobedience and broke the law, was arrested and put on trial. And um, this met a lot of opposition from men. This would be quite revolutionary if you think about it, uh, doubling the voting population in the country. They thought that it would really change the landscape of politics in general. And so there were lots of people who criticized this effort. Here's a, a whole organization committed to stopping women from voting. And here's an official program from a march that happened in Washington, D.C. in 1913 that was dedicated to advancing the right of women to vote. This is a picture from that march of women suffragettes, as they were called. Um, they actually got quite radical in some of their um, actions, including uh, chaining themselves to the White House fence and going on starvation campaigns um, or hunger strikes. But finally, by 1920, the 19th Amendment was passed and ratified, and it became law and allowed women to vote, basically doubling the voting population in the United States. Uh, these same women, many of them were also dedicated to the idea of prohibition, which is the idea that you should not 
uh, allow alcohol to be sold in America because it led to moral lapses. There were lots of women who felt that more of their husband's paycheck should be coming home to feed and clothe children and not to um, uh, go to saloons. This uh, cartoon on the right, lips that touch liquor shall not touch ours. These are, this is actually a joke of a cartoon. It's men dressed up as women uh, kind of poking fun at the uh, prohibition movement. And while prohibition is not established on the national level until the 1920s, it does take hold in a lot of the states during this time period. And I think 40% um, of the states passed prohibition laws. We talked a little bit about Taylorism. Uh, this is also called scientific management. It was basically where we became obsessed with making sure our factories were more efficient and could work quickly and efficiently. And they did something called time motion studies where they would watch people at work and figure out how best to organize labor. They also started paying workers by the piece that they made rather than by the hour. And this made a lot of workers um, work really, really hard and push the boundaries of their, um, of their abilities to try and make more money through this effort. But this was all called scientific management. And it's kind of more of a darker aspect of progressivism where they treated people more like machines. Here's another example of that. This did lead to the growth of the assembly line though, which was a pretty important development in manufacturing. Muckrakers were journalists who tried to bring all of this outrage to the public by writing essays about what was going wrong in society. One of the most famous muckrakers was Upton Sinclair. He wrote this famous book, The Jungle, about what was going wrong in the meatpacking industry, where a lot of nasty things were getting into our food as a result of a lack of sanitation and safety standards. And then we also had Ida Tarbell. Ida Tarbell uh, exposed the uh, monopoly of uh, John D. Rockefeller and Standard Oil. And so she exposed uh, how the Rockefeller operation needed to be reformed. And then we had Lincoln Steffens. Lincoln Steffens talked all about how political machines were at work at the state and local uh, levels to um, corrupt our democracy. This is a famous cartoon that was produced during the time period that shows how the big businessmen in the back row there actually have all the power over the Senate and not the people. So hopefully now you know that progressives in the early 1900s were basically seeking social reforms as well as economic and moral reforms. Um, and they basically, uh, while they did a lot of things to try and improve society, they also had some blind spots in terms of dealing with issues of race and culture. Um, and they also tended to be a lot more religious and moralistic than today's progressives. But the progressive movement does live on today. Um, and we'll be talking more about it in class. I hope that you enjoyed this video. It's been a little fast, I think. So feel free to go back, stop, and uh, pause if you need to fill in a few other things to really feel like you're prepared for the quiz. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.